Hello and welcome to this 22nd session on DaVinci Resolve and this is our ninth session on color grading. Now let us continue from our previous session. In the previous session we learnt how the color management, how to set up a color workspace so that all kind of clips works under the same workspace and also then we also studied about the node order, how the color grades change when the node order is changed. And now let us come back, we also talked about the destructive grading and if you apply too much of contrast or highlight in the very beginning of your color grade, we are going to lose some details and all those creative grading should be done at the end of our grading procedure. So, of understanding all these things, let us continue with our node experimentation. So, now let us work on one more exercise, but before that if I come back to resolve here, coming back to resolve, you can now see in the previous session we created this lift and curves combination to actually suppress the data in the shadow area and then recover it using the curves. Okay. Now, after this uh, I will just enable this uh, sorry disable this uh, ink filler and then I will just right click here and I am going to grab this still. In the previous session we had already created in the gallery an album called experiment and this I am going to call this as lift curve. Okay. So, we have applied these two effects here. So, after applying this effect I will come back here, I will right click and just like last time I am going to reset all grades and nodes. The keyboard shortcut is control plus home. Now, I am going to rework on a new grading uh, procedure and in this case now I am going to concentrate on my creative loop and for this creative loop I am now going to come to this node I will right click and I am going to label this as contrast. I am going to add a contrast node and in the contrast this time I am not going to use the lift. I am going to control the contrast using the contrast control here. I will drag it and increase the contrast slightly like this. See I will make the picture more contrast and also at the same time I will also move the pivot to the left to make it more brighter. See I will move it to left to make it more brighter. So, I have set the contrast approximately to 1.3 and pi by to 0.3 okay. and just to find out the difference press control D or disable this node. This was the original image and this is the color contrast image. So, this is the grade we have applied in our first node. Now, after this I am going to add one more new node either by pressing alt plus yes on the keyboard or right click here and choose add node add serial node. And this second node I am going to call this second node I will click here and add a label <coughs> sorry looks I will give it the name as looks and in this case you can see my image has a predominant yellow and red color and I want to make it slightly bluish. So, for this I am going to just do a simple color correction. I will come to this offset wheel and uh, actually red and yellow is present here and I will drag it in the opposite direction and when I start dragging first you will notice that the image becomes normal. And then when I drag further, you can now see that the image is slightly bluish. Now you can see the blue sky here. So now I have one contrast node and one looks node. Now what happens if I just interchange these two things? 
Now in the last case when we interchanged, we used the keyboard shortcut E to extract it and then we dragged and placed it here. There is a still easier way of swapping the nodes. The easiest way is press control on your windows machine or command on your mac machine, press control and drag this node and drop it over contrast. So, when you press control and when you drop it, now you see what happens is you can now see look and contrast got interchanged and you can see a substantial change in the image. So, this determines us that the node order always matters. And now whenever we are doing this comparison, so right now before I switch the nodes, okay, either I will go to edit and choose undo or press con select this uh, contrast again, press control and drag it back so that it is again interchanged. Now, this was our original look and just like all you know, I am going to save this grading and to save it, I will right click and choose grab still and I am going to call this as uh, that is uh, looks first. Okay. And then I am then going to actually now this is our original look. Now I will press control again and I will drag it and swap it again. And once I swap this, now if I double click on look first and then you can see that the split screen is on and if I drag it in the middle, see you can see the slight change. See, you can see the slight change happening over here. So, when looks is first and contrast is second, it is more oranges, but when contrast and look are interchange, it is turning more bluish. See, I can drag and check it or I can even drag it all the way to the left here and then I can just switch it off and on and I can make the comparison. Did you see the comparison of the image? And here you cannot say that one is better than the other. These are two different effects. Okay, now after experimenting with this color nodes, this demo I, why I showed it is when you are doing the color grading, sometimes when you swap the nodes or switch the nodes, it creates a different type of look. So, you can keep experimenting with these things and as you experiment it more and more, you gain more control over this color grade. Now, the next thing I want you to understand is HDR. What is HDR? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Now, before we proceed to HDR, I want to give you a brief uh, introduction to what is HDR. Now, what happens is whenever to give you an example, you have two colors, white and black. White is 100 percent white, say it is 100 and black is 0. Now, when you are digitally recreating this image, between the white 100 and the black 0, you have various shades of white and black and these various shades are represented as medium tones. Now, if I divide this into three sections, you have white, you have 50 percent gray and you have black, you have three sections now. So, now you have one single middle tone present at the center. Now, if I divide it into 4, now I have 100, 75, 50 and 0. Okay, 100 white, 75 percent white, 50 percent white and 0 is black. Now, if I divide this into 5, 
the range is going to you have more of those mid tones if i divide it into 6 i get a greater mid tone if i divide it into 7 i get still more greater mid tone and the range of these mid tones how much mid tone content your uh, video between the peak and the zero how much variation you can create is what we call as the dynamic range now in our eye for a normal human eye our dynamic range is comparatively very high compared to the dynamic range of our camera so to give you an example here now in the case of this image that you are seeing you have a cloud at the background or otherwise for this purpose I am going to use this second clip uh, I will switch off this tab here okay so now you can see the second clip you are not able to see it because this comparison tab was on so I have switched it off now I have moved to the sec second clip and in this second clip when you are seeing you have the whitest area at the background which is the cloud and you have the subject which is actually a dark area now in case of uh, when you are taking this kind of video we call this as the backlight effect as silhouette effect now what happens is in a regular camera when you take this image if you adjust your camera exposure say for example for the sky area to be clear i have to reduce the exposure if i reduce the exposure the sky area becomes very clear but what happens to the person standing here he is going to turn pitch black but if i adjust the exposure and increase the exposure to make the, this subject brighter then what happens to the sky the sky gets bleached out now if you want both the sky and this person to be clear then we are going to work with high dynamic range actually in your camera you will have a facility to shoot your images in HDRs HDR is basically used when you shoot landscapes or in outdoor in shots like this we use HDR and what HDR does is actually in case of camera the camera is going to take three images of this photograph say for example I take this image and I will then come over here and uh, in this I will come here and I am going to reduce its exposure so now uh, you are seeing this image and if I reduce the exposure of this image so I will make this exposure darker say I will uh, uh, move this exposure level I will reduce the exposure and as I reduce the exposure I will exp reduce it say for example in lift I will make it around uh, uh, say as I move it back you can see more clarity in the background okay I have moved it to minus 0 0.2 and in this setting the camera is going to take one photograph then it will overexpose it I will lift it and when I lift it say for example to around 0 0.1 this will take another picture where this subject is right and then I will double click on this or I will set it back back to 0 and this will take one more image so our camera is going to take one underexposed image normal exposed image overexposed image and it is going to process all the three images and it is going to create this HDR images and right now this is a high dynamic range image and when we are working on high dynamic range images then we are going to use this HDR panel you have this HDR grading so I will click on HDR grading and I am going to switch to HDR grade now and before I come to the HDR panel 
since this is a camera raw demo I can come to the first tab here which is called as the camera raw tab and here I can adjust the decode quality, decode, color signs, white balance and all these are based on my HDR setting that is used in the camera and here. So, now since it is a camera raw data, the metadata has stored the information about this image in various ISO levels, color temperature, exposure all this can be precisely controlled just like you control it in the camera. So, when you have shot this you have shot it in 400 ASA and now after doing the shooting I can now come to the ISO and change it to 100 ASA. So, when I change it to 100 ASA you can automatically see that you are seeing more detail in the sky but the images have turned dark because I have reduced the sensitivity of the image. But if you come to the graph and if you see it now in the graph you can see here that the highlight area on the top at this 896 line has got completely clipped out see you are seeing this as a straight line it has got clipped out. And if I want to recover this, you have a future here called as highlight recovery and this is a processor intensive job. So, when I click on highlight recovery, sometimes it takes little time, but once I click on this, you can now see that the actual details in the highlight has been recovered and also you can see more detail in the sky. So, when you are working with HDR images, you can reduce your ISO to brighten the highlight area and you can also recover the detail if it is suppressed by using highlight recovery. So, these are the kind of controls that is available and these are available only with camera raw. I cannot do these kind of controls in Apple ProRes images. See in Apple ProRes this entire tab is grayed out because this is not a camera raw image and these controls I can control only with raw image or raw video footages. And now when we are going to work on this image when we, once we have set the camera raw. Then the next thing is this time instead of the color wheels we are going to work with this HDR palette. So, click on the HDR palette to select it and here in the HDR palette you have on the top you can see you have various palettes here you have actually 6 palettes see the first one 3 what you have selected see the first three that I am using rep see to compare to you if I come to color wheels in color wheels we have only three controls lift is for the shadow area gamma is for the midtones area and gain is for the highlight area. Now, the range is there are only three ranges to control here. But when you come to HDR apart from this three you have only in lift I have three controls black, dark and shadow see one control of lift is further divided into three ranges means I have more precise control I can choose a particular tone or particular grade and I can only control that. So, I have a more precise control on a particular shade now because this is a HDR image and now similarly now if I select the next zone see this is black dark and shadow and this is dark shadow and light and see this light then you have 
shadow highlight shadow light and highlight and then you have light highlight and specular actually this has regular color wheel if it has three controls hdr has six controls for lift i have two for uh, shadow mid tones i have uh, two that is shadow and light and then for highlight i have two Hi, uh, that is if I come to highlight specular and highlight. So, like this the gain is divided into specular and highlight, the gamma is divided into this next range that is uh, uh, highlight uh, light and shadow and then the lift is divided into black and dark. So, like this I have a greater color tone and if you want to specifically know in your graph what is the range it is going to get affected then you have a panel here. Enable this panel and when you click on this panel now you can see that these controls are precisely shown. Now say for example, if I select black you can see only this tonal range is affected this range and if I come to dark see this range is affected and shadow this range is affected and then in light you can see this is the range it is affecting highlight is affecting this range and specular is arranging affecting this range. So, now you can see the range affected for black dark shadow light highlight and specular. So, so this has a greater color zone and so we can more precisely do our grading because we have more control over the grade and this is the advantage of shooting the image with HDR or high dynamic range. And now one thing here is this HDR panel although it works precisely with raw clips you can also use this clip for other images say for example, for this apple ProRes image also I can use this and I can control it. But the only difference is in case of this apple ProRes the actual range it is going to simulate the software is going to simulate it and so there will be a little uh, means around 30 percent drop in the range selection compared to the actual HDR image, but still these controls can be used even on your regular videos and not only on the HDR video. So, right now I will come back to my HDR image. The very first control I am going to use here is the global exposure. This is like the exposure of your camera and just like we use the exposure in the camera. I am going to increase the exposure level here and I am going to move it and uh, I will brighten up the image and as I am brightening it you can see that uh, this is turning brighter I will uh, move it and increase the exposure and I will bring it to almost 1 and when I brighten it one thing what is happening is so as I brighten it you can see in the graph that this highlight area has moved almost to the peak do not brighten it further because it gets clamped. Now, the thing here is now the image got brightened, but I lost the details in the sky because it has got overexposed. The beauty of raw images this data although it is suppressed here that data is still present in the metadata and I can recover this by coming to this palette here. I will come to the uh, third uh, that is the last three palettes here and in this I will choose the highlight palette and in the highlight palette now I can slowly reduce this to bring this peak line little to the down. So, I will select this highlight and I am going to drag it and as I drag you can see it is coming down and I will bring it down by approximately by say uh, 
two stops i will bring it by around minus two okay i have brought it down by minus two so you can see here the line has come down and i have more range here now to control and you can see the sky area has now retained its details okay now once we have retained and we have uh, uh, actually now we have increased the global exposure and after we increase the global exposure we reduce the highlight by reducing it by minus 2 and then if i want the sky to be brighter or darker i can control through this third panel which is the light panel and in light panel if i drag it to the left you can reduce the overall brightness of the sky or increase it here and i will slightly reduce this brightness a little like this and once i have reduced the brightness and if you see that it is it has lost its contrastness then you can come to specular and in specular if i increase this specular value you can see the contrast is getting added up see now the sky has become more contrast and also if you find that the sky i want to add more blue to the sky then i come can come to this light area and in the light area drag it slightly towards the blue and as I drag it, you can see the sky turns bluish. Okay. So, here what we did was we globally increased the exposure by one point, and after we increased the exposure to bring back the detail, we reduced the highlight by minus 2 level. And when it became actually very the brightness we controlled with this light and to make it contrast we use the specular and finally we slightly added a blue tint and this is the kind of control we can have when your image is a hdr image so once we have controlled the sky area now our next focus is on the darker area see some of the areas here in the plants and some of these areas appears to be more darker. So, to control this, now we move to the second set of panels here. That is, we are going to move to shadow, dark and black. And I will come into this range and the very first thing I am going to do is, I am going to lift this shadow area by increasing the exposure. So, when I increase the exposure, now only the shadow area image will get brightened up see it is not affecting the sky and only the area that is the sky area is getting exposed see now you can see more detail over here however since it is a green landscape i want to add more green here and for this purpose in shadow I will also slightly increase the saturation level say for example I will move the saturation level and make it around 1.2 here and you can see this has become more colorful. Now the next control I am going to carry out is once I have made the shadows brighter once I have increased the brightness now the problem is I have lost the contrastness. So, to increase the contrastness, now from the shadow, I move to a more narrow zone which is dark and here I am going to reduce the exposure uh, slightly here say I will bring it uh, and I will move it, uh, uh, I will reduce this exposure a little and after I reduce this exposure, I will see the darkest area and in the darkest area slightly i will make it more darker so now we have also regained the contrastness we have all the details also and this gives a more colorful and a high dynamic range look to my image 
And now one last thing that I have to show you in this session is when you are doing this adjustments that is in this HDR panel, I want to know what is the range of my image that is getting affected by these panels. So, for this in every panel on the left hand side you have a button and when I click on this button in black if I click on this and hold it you can see this shows me the area which is getting affected by the black panel. You can see only the dark areas are getting affected and whichever area is gray it means that it has been masked out. Now, similarly if I click on dark area see now you have a little more gray area getting affected and when I click on shadow area see the shadow area is affecting this area. And now if I come to the next zone here if I select the light area see this is the area it is getting affected. Now, whatever effect I am applying to light area I want this to affect only the sky, but some part of this uh, that is this rock is also getting affected that is why this also has turned blue. Now, this range can be controlled here. So, to control this range what I am now going to do is uh, in this drop out I will choose the highlight area here and when I click on highlight area this will be permanently showing me and if I come here to my light area and if I make any adjustment you can see see you see one panel on the left hand side this panel is going to control the range of this tone. So, for the light zone I want to mask out all the area except the sky. So, for this I am going to drag it slightly to the top and as I drag it to the top you can see now only the sky area is highlighted and now if I switch off the highlight you can see now the rock is not turning bluish because I have reduced this area. So, remember in this HDR on the left hand side you have a panel and you can see here this width determines the range it is going to select or the range of tone that is going it is going to select in the image. This can be controlled by this side slider here ok. So, now we have perfectly done the grading for this HDR and once I have done this HDR grading I am now going to uh, right click on the uh, here and I am going to grab this still and I am going to save this grade as my HDR grade 1. So, this completes our session and in this session we have explored how to work with raw images and high dynamic range, how we are going to do color grading in high dynamic range. So, to, to briefly summarize in case of our regular images we have only three areas lift, gamma and gain whereas, in HDR images lift gamma and range is divided into 6 range instead of lift gamma and gain we have 6 range and because we have a wider range we can precisely control the grading of a particular area of our image by using this tonal range and we also understood how to adjust the tonal range uh, by eliminating all the shadow area and making our grade affect only the sky. So, with this we complete this session and in the next session we are going to explore another beautiful future of color grading which is called as magic mask. So, for this let us meet in our next session. Thank you.